Hey guys, welcome. For today's practice, we're gonna work a little more specifically on hip mobility. And mobility and flexibility get used somewhat, not quite interchangeably, but often together. I know I often use them together. And flexibility refers more to the quality of the tissue of the muscle, like how much that stretches or doesn't stretch. <laughs> Whereas mobility refers to the range of motion at the hip joint. And often in yoga, we are focusing on the flexibility and the mobility kind of comes as a, as a byproduct <laughs> just by the quality of movement that we do. Today, we'll focus a little bit more on movement that targets a little bit more specifically how the joint moves. Um, you'll want to have a block or even just a couple of um, like solid hardback books would work really well too for what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and start in child's pose and almost always a nice way, at least I think, to settle in when we're doing work with the hips. You bring big toes together, knees out wide and settle your hips back to your heels. And then just let your arms stretch out in front. Bring your forehead down to your mat. And then surely let your hips settle back to the heels. And you may even here to start to take a little waggle of your hips side to side. Kind of feel into how they're moving today. And then let things come back to center. And just take a few moments here, start to settle into your breath. Just give yourself that moment to transition into your practice. And just to notice how things are feeling today. What's your starting point? What's been going on in your body? And then how might some of these little practices help to benefit the mobility of the joints? And just take a couple more breaths like that. No hurry, nice and steady. With your next inhale, side forward to tabletop. Just take a moment to stack, hips right over knees, shoulders over wrists. And even though we're working in the hips, get really mindful with your hand placement because they're just gonna be bearing a little weight here. So spread wide through your fingers, root down through your fingertips. Right? Especially at right, the base of the thumb and the index finger, those are the parts that often wanna lift away. You find a little support through your low belly. And then you're gonna lift your right knee up, keep it bent, and just start to make some nice, slow, big circles. Yeah. The weight's probably gonna shift over a bit to the left. Try not to let it go, to, not to let it go all the way. And give that, that hip side a little support as well. And I would suggest here just to go slow enough so you can really feel what's happening as you work the joint through that range of motion. And reverse. The hip is a ball and socket joint. So you can picture kind of like a tennis ball into a, a concave plate. So it has a lot of range of motion. But sometimes some of those places get a little bit stickier. And come back to center, stretch your leg out behind you. And then if they're not already, tuck your left toes under, press up and back, three-legged dog with your right leg high. Take a full breath in, lift up through your heel, and then exhale, step your right foot all the way through. Now bring your left knee down to your mat, and then bring your hands to frame your front foot. You can come up onto fingertips. You can use a block here if you want a little bit more height. And just give a little squeeze of your legs into center. Take a full breath in. And then with your exhale, slide your hips back, Ardha Hanuman, you can walk your hands back with you. And inhale, come forward, bend the front knee. And then exhale, slide back. Just move with your breath, nice and slow and steady. Kind of got that big circular action. <laughs> now a little bit more front to back. And just notice, where does it feel like the hip move, moves smoothly? <laughs> 
Where are there little hitches? Good. With your next inhale, come forward, plant your hands, lift your back knee, take a big step forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway to root your feet, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. And then bring your hands to your hips. Keep your spine long. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands together at your heart. Good, reach up, inhale. And then a little different, bring your hands to your hips, exhale. Take another breath in, stand tall. All right, and keep the spine long. Find the hinge forward at the fold, at the crease of the hips. So this allows us to fold forward around the hip joint instead of just at the waist. Lift halfway, inhale. Fold, exhale, hands down. Step back, high plank. Take a breath in. And then exhale, down dog. Full breath in and down dog. And exhale, bring both knees down to your mat. And just walk your hands back if you need to so you can stack shoulders and wrists. Strong hands. A little tone through the belly for support. And then make those big hip circles on the left side or whichever side you didn't do. Doesn't matter which direction you go first. We do both. Again, just go slow enough. I can know for me there's a bit of a difference side to side. And sometimes different one direction versus the other. And switch sides. Right, so our joints produce this fluid called synovial fluid. It's, I was thinking about it, it's like the WD-40 for our joints. And when we work specifically with mobility exercises, we really can increase right, when we're that production of the synovial fluid. And stretch your left leg back, tuck your right toes under, take a full breath in. Use your exhale, press all the way back, three-legged down dog. Inhale here, lift your heel up. Exhale, step your left foot all the way through. And then bring your right knee down to the mat. Keep your hands down low, just a little more support here. A little squeeze of your inner legs. Take a full breath in. And then exhale, slide your hips back. Bring your front leg to or towards straight. Keep your foot engaged. Inhale, come forward, bend your knee. Exhale, slide back. Good, just let it move a little bit with your breath. Alignment doesn't have to be perfect. Feel into what's happening in the pelvis and the hips. And sometimes we know there's a little less synovial fluid when things feel dry. We get that popping and cracking within the joints. Right, often this happens in the morning when we haven't been moving much, right? And when we are moving, we're producing that synovial fluid. The next time you come forward, stay. Lift your back knee, take a big step forward. Lift halfway, inhale. This time bring your hands to your hips. Keep your spine long, inhale, come all the way up. Let's remove from the hips instead of from the waist. Inhale, both arms up. This time exhale, fold forward, arms out wide, but think of that crease of the pelvis. Lift halfway, take a breath in. And then take your feet out wider, turn your toes out, heels in, squat down, malasana. Right? You could always use your block here for a little bit more support under the hips if that would feel good. And then let's do this. Go ahead, keep your hands down to the ground. Let the pelvis settle and find some length in your spine. But then invite in a little bit of movement here. Right? So we shift to the left foot and then over to the right. Just noticing what might feel good in your body. You might even come to the back a little bit or off to the side. When we're getting into the hips, maybe I think about a little bit more free form. <laughs> There's just a little bit more movement. We're trying to get that rotation within the ball and socket joint or whatever joint we're trying to get a little bit more movement mobility in. So sometimes it's just finding playful ways to move our body around that joint. And then come back to center, plant your hands, lift your hips, step back, high plank. 
take a full breath in. And then with your exhale, down dog. Okay, stay strong through your hands, just like we did in tabletop. Inhale, right leg up. And then as you exhale, bend your knee, open your hips. So you stack right hip on top of left. And then from here, just start to make some figure eights with the joint. Right? So sometimes it takes a little bit more brain movement than just circles. Doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Right, just getting the joint moving in different directions. And then here's the fun part, try to reverse it. That one really takes a little bit of brain power. And just like the circles go slowly enough so that it's thoughtful and you're mindful of what's happening. Good, after that one, inhale, come back to center. Exhale, step all the way through. And this time back, keep your back knee lifted, freeing your hands to frame your front foot. Right. Another place if you want to use a block or blocks, you can take a full breath in. And then exhale nice and slow, just tap your left knee down to the ground. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. Keep the crown of your head extending forward and a little tone through your belly for support. And just move with your breath. Keep a little of that sensation of hugging the legs into center so there's stability even within the movement. Good. Next time you come up, stay. Take a full breath in. And then with your exhale, step all the way forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands together at your heart. Right, so when we think about the hip joint, and as we fold forward, we're thinking about the socket folding forward within the hip joint instead of just coming at the waist. Inhale, reach up. Right, keep the spine long, fold at the front of the hips, come forward. Half lift, inhale. Fold, exhale, plant your hands, step back, high plank. Full breath in, and then exhale, down dog. Root through your hands, right? So find the strength and support. Inhale, lift your left leg up. Exhale, bend your knee, open your hip. And then the same, work towards those figure eights, whichever direction you go first. <laughs> Mine feel a little funnier on this side, like the top part of the eight is bigger than the bottom part of the eight. Just something interesting to notice in our bodies. Right? Reverse directions. And if we've had like injuries, maybe postural issues, sometimes we really will notice that different side to side. And next inhale, come back to center. Exhale, step all the way through. And bring your hands to frame your front foot. Hug your legs in, tone your belly. Take a full breath in. And then with your exhale, slowly tap your right knee. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower and tap. And find your breath with the movement. And so we're moving with breath, but also just keeping it slow and controlled. Let's take one more. I'm getting a little good popping and cracking even here, just as we do it. Inhale. Next exhale, step all the way forward. Lift halfway. And from here, bring hands to hips. Strong legs come all the way up. Exhale, hands together at your heart. Okay, from here, grab your block. And I'm going to do this facing forward just so you all can see, but you can do it wherever on your mat works well. And then go ahead and step up with your right foot. And you're just going to first just try and find the balance. Sometimes I like to do this and just come to the toes first. If you've got those firm blocks, those are great. I have these really old squishy blocks, so it challenges the balance a little bit more. Okay, and then when you feel ready, just float your left foot up. Okay, and then you're just gonna let the leg 
Start to swing back and forth a little bit. See if instead of trying to make it happen, you're just letting it go, right? Once you get the momentum moving, it just goes. And then if you want, you can add the arms, kind of like a, a bonus. We'll get the shoulders going a bit too. But just letting the, oop, and you might yeah, lose the balance a little bit. Right? A strong right leg and some tone through the belly helps while letting the leg just move on its own. Really good for lubricating the hip joint. Especially for someone who's kind of creaky jointed by nature. Some of us have that vata energy. Right? Mobility practices are really good for that drier nature. And then, and then slow it down. <laughs> and switch sides. Right? Stand into your left. Take a moment to find the balance. You can just come up onto your right toes. Root through the standing leg. And then when you're ready, Right, sometimes it takes a little muscle energy to get it going and then just let it go. Sometimes it feels like then the arms kind of naturally want to go with it. If you have to step a toe down for balance because that happens, <laughs> you can do that. Does one side move a little freer than the other? When you notice is you just kind of let the leg go instead of trying to control that action at the joint. <laughs> and slow it down. Step off. Nice. When you feel good to just move the hips a little bit side to side. Take a couple circles after that. You can set your block or your books to the side. And then go ahead, come to facing the long side of the mat. Come to face the long side of the mat. Take your legs out wide. So take a full breath in, reach your arms up. And then exhale, fold forward. And with your inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Bring your hands so they're underneath your shoulders. Take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, take a bend into your right knee. Really press down into your left foot. Inhale, come through center, and then exhale to the left. And just side to side a couple times with your breath, right? as you can see, a little bit more of that fluid movement is really good for the joint. And sometimes holding poses is really good for the, the muscles, that flexibility. Movement can be a little bit more for the mobility of the joint. It's movement that starts to create that lubrication of the joint. Okay, and then you, you can either stay here with these side lunges. If it feels like you have a little bit more range of motion, you could come all the way down Skandasana. Right, that gets into hip and knee and ankle. <laughs> and then come through center, inhale, and to the other side. So whichever feels like a better choice, just take a couple more rounds side to side. With breath, but slowly, mindfully. Let's do one more each side. And then come back to center. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, come all the way up. And with your exhale, take a big step forward front of your mat. Okay, go ahead, start with big toes together. Find a focus point that drishti for your balance. And let's start with hands at hips. Stand into your left foot this time. Inhale, bring your right knee up. And just see if you can feel where hip and knee are in line and then knee and ankle are in line. Flex your foot. Root down through your standing foot and zip up through your low belly to help support the balance. Okay, with your inhale, open your knee out to the side, just like you're opening a book. And then exhale, close together. Good, inhale, open out. Exhale, close together. Just so that movement all that different ways. Inhale, open up. 
And if as you open up to the right, the left hip wants to slide all the way forward, see if you can keep it back, not forcing, <laughs> exhale. Inhale, open up. Exhale back together. Let's do one more, inhale. Exhale, close together, take a breath in. And then exhale, both feet down. Okay, switch sides, stand into your right. Bring your left knee up. Right, so think 90 degree angles at hip, knee and ankle, flex your foot. Root your standing foot, tone your belly. Inhale, open left knee out to the side. Exhale, close together. And just be mindful of what the right hip is doing. Inhale, open. Whereas if the whole pelvis turns, maybe open a little less. Right, so if it turns with, right, keeping the pelvis a little bit more stable so you're getting that range of motion through the hip joint instead of just letting the other hip come with it. Our body's really good at cheating when things aren't always going as it wants to. Let's take one more. Come back to center, take a breath in, and then exhale, both feet down, hands to heart. Inhale, sweep both arms up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, fold forward. Lift halfway. And then again, take your feet out wide, turn toes out, heels in, bend your knees, squat. Hands to heart. Right. And you can sit up on a block or two blocks if you want a little bit more height. And then do that same, just take a little movement side to side. Into one foot and then the other foot. Right. Some circles around if it feels good. Is there any more movement than there was the first time we did it? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> And come back to center, bring your hands behind you and come all the way down to lying on your back. Once you get there, take your feet out a little bit wider, let your knees rest together. And you can bring your arms out wide, T-shape, cactus shape, whatever feels good. Take a full breath in. And then with your exhale, let both knees fall to the right. And you guessed it, we'll move with breath. Come back to center, inhale. Use some strength from your low belly to help move. Exhale to the left. Good, back through center to the right. And I'm still even getting a little movement through the hip joint on the right side here to the left. through center, to the right. Good, couple more times side to side. You could choose, especially for someone who's really creaky, especially when you first get up, even just using one or two of these, just to help movement, right, lubrication, that synovial fluid start to get going in the morning. And then whenever you come to the left, next time you can finish up there. Come back to center. Bring both knees into your chest. Right. This is one we do a lot, or at least I do a lot. <laughs> really simple but effective, I think. Just make some big circles. So instead of both knees going together, take them wide apart, then together, and then you can draw them back up the center line. Right. Big circles wide apart. Bring them together and back up. So, right, so with hands to knees, you come wide apart till your arms are straight together, back up the center. And then same thing, switch sides. We tend to have a dominant side that our body likes to move, even a direction it likes to move. So sometimes you'll notice things feel really good in one direction and then quite awkward <laughs> in the other direction. <laughs> Let's guys hug your knees in. One more happy baby. And so bend your knees, take a hold either behind your thighs 
or hands to your feet. See what feels better. Flex your feet. And then just give a little pressure of hands and feet into one another so that there's a little bit of engagement. And then just take a little rock side to side. I think there's a reason this one always feels so good when we do it in our practice. So we're getting a little flexibility around the hip joint, but then some mobility as well. You'll probably find some that feel really effective, like really sit well with your body. Others you don't need as much. It's fine, right? It's about finding the tools that we need, not just in the practice, but that so that our body feels healthy throughout the day. All right, come back to center, release. And then just give a squeeze, knees in, forehead up to knees, full breath in. Exhale, release. Let's take just a few moments in Shavasana. Even with a shorter practice, just nice to really let the effects of the practice settle in. Grab support if you want any. Soften or close your eyes. And let your body settle. And you might just notice anything here too. Sometimes a little bit of heat a little blood flow moving. Might be interesting to notice once you get up and move after practice, how you feel too. And let's take about five more breaths here. If you want to stay longer, stay longer. You're ready to get up, reach your arms up. Bend your knees, roll to the side. And press yourself all the way up. Bring your hands together at your heart. Sit tall, lift heart to hands. Bow in, head to heart. Thank you, as always, for sharing the practice. Namaste.